Now let's step back and look at another series of questions. If you had family meals growing up, what did you talk about? What was the economic situation of your family growing up? Were you the first to go to college in your family? What kind of college did you attend? When you were in graduate school, did you feel like you fit in right away? Or did you feel like you didn't know how to act or what to expect for a period of time? Think if you had 10 different people, how different each person might answer these questions. Now think about any students or others you are mentoring or advising and how they might answer these questions. That leads us to a concept called cultural capital. Cultural capital comes out of the work of a French sociologist, Pierre Boudot, who studied and wanted to understand social reproduction. He asked the question, why is it that children of those in power followed their family members into positions of power? This led to the concept of cultural capital and how so much of what we learn is consciously or unconsciously acquired based on our experiences growing up. Think about all the things you learned that you never knew you were learning or sometimes you were put into a position that consciously provided you with the stuff you need to learn. Having acquired this information and habits is a way that others recognize you're one of us. Cultural capital includes behaviors, attitudes, values, ways of being that you do naturally often without knowing it. In reality, it is also the way that dominant groups maintain their dominance. This is one of the core elements by which social dominance and social stratification takes place. The interesting thing about cultural capital is that its value doesn't come from just having it. It becomes valuable when you display it, referred to as habitus. Habitus, or your habits, are how you display your cultural capital. The nice thing about cultural capital is that you get to keep spending it. It's not like the $5 that you spend at Starbucks that is gone forever once you drink your cup of coffee. When you have cultural capital, you can keep using and expanding it. Cultural capital and communities of practice strongly intersect. Everyone enters a new community of practice with various types and amounts of cultural capital. No two people have the same path or same kind of access to cultural capital, even by the time one completes a PhD or postdoc. Members are ideally aware of and value what you bring. Then there begins an exchange with typically a newcomer absorbing new cultural capital, but also sharing their cultural capital with the group. Let's think about the analogy of parachuting into your postdoc group. All these concepts are actively at play in those rapid transition times. All transitions provide challenges and are different from one person to the rest. Recognizing that research groups operate as communities of practice can help you understand and navigate where your parachute lands. Also keeping in mind that no two people enter the group with the same starting cultural capital. Understanding that cultural capital will vary greatly among individuals sets the stage for seeking it out from different people. It doesn't show up in your account. It's just like any other kind of capital. It's not going to show up without effort.